Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, have this opportunity to come and talk to you a little bit about um, the nonprofit sector. Uh, and uh, five minutes and 20 seconds uh, doesn't allow much time uh, to sort of rip into a lot of the preconceived notions you might have about the nonprofit sector. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, a few definitions that I'll be working with. Uh, first, nonprofit organizations. Uh, there are five things that, when in concert with each other, uh, distinguish a nonprofit from any other organization. Those are that they're voluntary, they have nonprofit distribution clauses, they're organized, they're private, and they're also self governed. Um, uh, and then just to wrap that into something that's believable and understandable, my definition is an organization that exists to fulfill a mission is not lucrative enough for the private sector, uh, but not popular or viable enough for the public sector to engage in things like animal welfare um, or labor unions. Uh, also, because I said sector, I want to define uh, the public sector. Uh, those are things like government. Private sector are things like businesses, like jobbing.com, and the nonprofit sector, which are community-based organizations. That's also known uh, things like voluntary sector, social sector, citizen sector, things like that. This this might be boring, but this is really important. Um, there are three major tax codes that nonprofit organizations operate in. C3 is for charitable organizations, like Habitat. C4 is for special interest or lobbying. And C6 is professional or trade organizations. Um, there are many more. Um, in fact, uh, C3s are cemeteries, and uh, C21 are black lung trusts. Zoolander, anybody? Come on. Uh, um, uh, political action committees are not nonprofit organizations, um, but it's important to know that they do have a special, distinct tax code. Um, and uh, uh, so what I came to talk about, the past, present, and future. So the American Revolution was really based on community organization and voluntary action. Um, and both of those are really important to our history. Um, and let me get to why that is. <laughs> um, in fact, our Constitution was founded on the principles um, and, and sort of uh, uh, written to protect those. Uh, in fact, what Alexis de Tocqueville called the tyranny of the majority. Uh, and he, uh, he wrote a book called Democracy in America that observed all sorts of really cool stuff, um, uh, sort of about America's willingness to uh, uh, be uh, voluntary and things like that. So um, what's happened from then to now, from the very early um, aspects of voluntary organization and community organization, um, there have been Pretty, a couple really big things. First one is September 11th. Uh, a lot of money went in to support the disaster and disaster relief of that, um, and there wasn't uh, very much accountability or transparency that happened with that. Um, the 1.6 million organizations currently in the nonprofit sector, 1.2 million public serving organizations, and 400,000 of those 1.6 are what's called member serving, like those labor unions that we talked about. Um, Birkenstocks and patchouli, what I really wanted to come to talk about is the perception that people have um, about that, and one of the biggest perceptions is uh, the lack of transparency, um, like the operational structure. Um, or the lack thereof that ma many people think that nonprofit organizations have. Um, you know, uh, executive compensation is another thing. If you remember the uh, United Way uh, quote unquote scandal that happened uh, back in the 80s when uh, the president of United Way of America had uh, um, a private jet and a whole bunch of money. Um, also, a uh, current misperception about uh, community organizing is that uh, they don't have any actual responsibilities. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just Governor Palin and Rudy Giuliani that think that. Um, uh, there really are a lot of people that, that feel that, um, which is really unfortunate because without Su uh, Susan B. Anthony or MLK, she wouldn't be on that stage. Um, so what I want to call to for the future is a call back to the roots. The foundation of our nation really was built on community organizing and uh, uh, voluntary action. First fire department, for example. Um, also, so not just a call back to roots, but a call for greater accountability. Senators Grassley and Senators Baucus actually commissioned a report from the independent sector that uh, actually launched new 990 forms, which is the tax form that will launch this year. Uh, as a donor, you need to be more discretionary about what organizations you give to. Um, in addition, we want to uh, call for increased vitality. Um, if a Starbucks goes uh, out of business, we walk another block to get a cup of coffee. If a youth service agency uh, goes out of business, lives are impacted in, in big ways. So I'm really pushing for more legislative representation. Here's a couple uh, um, uh, for further explana uh, or exploration sort of sites that you can go to. Um, and these next slides sort of give me an opportunity to talk about uh, the things that I might have missed in the slides. Uh, previous. Um, and one of those is uh, the Nonprofit Capacity Building Initiative, uh, which we're currently trying to get passed through Congress, which will create a uh, similar organization to the Small Business Administration, um, but that uh, but it will be focused on nonprofit organizations, and that will be that increased vitality. I want to leave you with two quotes, both from Alexis de Tocqueville. First one is, the health of a democratic society may be measured by the quality of functions performed by its private citizens. And as you look and reflect on the ways that you've impacted your community, you are a private citizen, and that's what you do. Um, so the health of our democratic society lies heavily on that. And finally, the greatness of America 
lies not in being more enlightened than any other nation, which obviously we aren't, but rather in her ability to repair her faults. And I think that's something that makes us exceptional above any other nation is that we have the ability to do that. So thank you.